boom, 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 boom. Underground Lake Geneva, Yerkes Observatory. This is not part of the tour. They're not going to let you up here. Hold on, hold on. They, they, they don't want to let me in. I, I wouldn't let me in. Philip Sassano here with another episode of Underground Lake Geneva. I'm speaking with you this morning on this beautiful day in Williams Bay, Wisconsin on the roof of the Yerkes Observatory. Not only is this complex on 77 acres beautiful and a historic gem on the lake, what people don't realize, it's got one foot firmly planted in history and the other in cutting edge R&D and educational outreach. I'm standing right here on the floor, really the, the elevated floor of the Great Refracting Telescope. The floor is 73 feet in diameter and is actually one large elevator. It raises and lowers actually so that you can see inside of the telescope lens. And I'm actually speaking to you two stories up. Do you have an official position on a killer asteroid? Uh, we don't know of anything that's a threat at the moment. I can always say, we don't know of anything. That doesn't mean there isn't something. Oh, great. <laughs> so you're not sure. We don't even know. Well, we have um, one of the projects that some of the high school students that have been working with us have been doing involves getting measurements of positions of asteroids to see if they might be. Asteroids. See if there's a rogue out there? Yeah. See if there's one that's well, going to like ping off of something else and just yeah, come our well, way? Generally the discoveries have come from elsewhere, but our students have been doing a lot of the measurements. I think what's incredible is how manual the process is, how beautiful and how simple it really is. I mean, think of all the famous astronomers and astrophysicists that have really have used Yerkes to track the cosmos since, since really the turn of the century. Now, at one time, this took photographic plates, right? Right. With photographic emulsions, yeah. right? How does it do it now? Well. If we were still using it for research, we might still use it photographically. Really? And that would be just, this pulls out. Is it like an old box camera? Yeah, basically. Wow. It's like the old cameras that Hello? use big pieces of film. This usually was plates, 8 by 10 inch plates that would fit in a plate holder. There. Now tell me about all these instruments that are around the, around the periphery okay. here. Tell me we, about that. That was part of the... 1967 upgrade, and these would read out the position that the telescope was pointed to. Got it. So the now, various coordinates that you'd be right, locking in on. Exactly. And the electronics for that died. I mean, that was installed in 1967. Right. When the electronics died in around 1990, <laughs> you couldn't, you know, you couldn't just go by you and replace the parts. You couldn't go run out and get batteries from Radio Shack downtown well, and bring them out here. Right. I mean, these were pretty much. It's pretty much standard electronics as of 1967. Got it. But we all know what's happened in the electronics right. It'd be industry. like looking at the difference between like a mercury capsule and like a space shuttle panel, right? Yeah. I'm just so wrong all the time. They're always right here. They're right. Oh, oh my, oh. I, I think that thing's coming right at us. direction should be easy enough, right? Open, close. I think I think I got this one. Again, still can't believe they're letting me do it. It's more creaking. WD-40. I'll make a donation. 
we're building here the camera for this telescope. Now remember, this is an infrared camera. So this is basically a little heat coil that goes on off 10 times a second, and the camera sees it blinking. And with this motor contraption, we move it back and forth in front of the camera, and that's how we figure out what the geometry is and exactly how it works. Unbelievable. Is this like an extra? No, this is a text test fixture. No, this is, uh, this is going to go on the airplane. Can I have that? No. Uh, if you give us... For the right uh, price. For yeah, the right exactly. Price. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably I love your geese. I mean, the whole technology has changed. Uh, the uh, the detector, the detector that was uh, that used to be in here, uh, is a totally different technology than what we have in Hawk. I think that's so fantastic. Even, even that uh, uh, changed uh, uh, by leaps and bounds. Oh my gosh! Rich tradition, cutting edge technology. You got to get down to your geese. I'm a little nervous. What's with the gloves? It's making everybody a little yeah, nervous. We're working on the base. Uh, fiberglass base for the 41 inch telescope and I had to replace a bearing and the bearing was um, in, encased in fiberglass so I had to chip that out and we just mixed up some special die cast <laughs> to put in there to put the new bearing in. Yeah I used to replace bearings on historic telescopes with my dad all the time. <laughs> yeah. I used to do that all the time. The guy with the big nose originally had a hornet or a bee on it. We think it's John D. Rockefeller being stung to pay for the University of Chicago, mm. but that would have been rude. So they were all eventually. <laughs> of course, that would have been away. rude. Yeah, we're not rude. Whenever you chisel a bee stinging someone or a knife when, in someone's back, you that's rude. Cast the bee on the nose, that's rude. Yes. Yeah. How many bees do you think they removed? The 12. <laughs> so there's an actual number. They're not linear. I I'm a little confused on this, this theory on pulse broadening. Yep. We all are. Richard! Yes, sir? What is the effect of Urca shells? Better than the effect of gamma rays. I thought we were talking about space. Richard! Yes, sir? What do you know about electron scattering in envelopes? You should always stamp them. Richard! Yes, Phil? What do you know, what do you know about the appearance of dusty H blisters? A little calamine lotion will take care of that. Killer asteroid project. I was right! Richard! What I what I find fascinating about, about the plate room is that these plates were taken with the, the large refracting telescope that A lot saw. of them in here were. We've got more than a hundred thousand photographic plates. So there's more than a hundred thousand plates, and how far back do they date? 1897. 1897. So in essence, this plate vault represents the entire almost century of photographs of the cosmos. Yes, right. And it's one oh, of the largest real. photographic plate collections in the country. One of the largest. Yeah, certainly top five. Now, I also overheard that, that there were other scientists who actually referred to this as, as sort of a reference point, right? It is. That they come here to look at the way stars were positioned, you know, decades ago. Well, think about it. The great refractor was taking plates of objects in the cosmos right. for a hundred years. So you can look at, a, let's say, a globular cluster of stars. Globular cluster. Globular clusters. See if you can say that three times. It sounds like a desav for okay. that. Clusters of car stars that are bound together right. with their gravity. Right. And you take a, a plate that was uh, photographed in, eight, in the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s. Right. Compare that with a plate that was taken, you know, 10 years ago. Right. Same telescope, same cluster. And you compare how the stars have moved within that cluster. These plates are amazing. Hey, Jim, it looks like there's some dirt on here. No, no, those are stars. You, you didn't ruin another one, did you? Oh, my gosh. 
Well, you're, what you're doing is you're taking kids that would otherwise not have any exposure to stuff like this, and you're setting them on fire about <laughs> science. Well, <laughs> science. <laughs> no, it's a very safe environment here for your kids. I'm just saying. Science, mm -hmm. engineering, saying. technology, math. These kids get excited about it here, and kids that are excited about it now will go on to choose careers. So, it's, it, so it's safe to say that really the, the goal is, and really maybe the future for your kids is, all of, the, all of this educational outreach produces scientists for the future. You bet it does. And good They, they left me on the roof, alone, with the camera. I've been here for like 